Recently I made a video about Intel's plans to deliver five production nodes in four years. I'd go so far as to say not so much a plan as a promise. Loads of detail, very interesting information about the technical aspects of their production nodes, and also plenty of information about the products that will come as a result of their production techniques. The nodes coming in the very near future are interesting, however Intel is promising huge leaps forward when it comes to their 20A and 18A processes. On this slide Intel ties together the name of the process, its status, the products coming from that process and the technologies included in that process. So Intel 7 is in HVM or high volume manufacturing today. They mention Alder Lake and Raptor Lake, also Sapphire Rapids. Emerald Rapids hasn't yet appeared and therefore would appear to be a tweak on Sapphire Rapids. Next we have Intel 4, the manufacturing ramp has started. Meteor Lake is imminent. They mention a custom ASIC for networking and the use of EUV lithography. I covered this in my previous video. Then we move on to Intel 3, ready for manufacturing in the second half of this year, Granite Rapids on the data center, Sierra Forest for the data center, and Intel 3 will be used in Intel Foundry services. After that, we have Intel 20A ready for manufacturing in the first half of 2024. The client product is Arrow Lake and the technologies ribbon FETs and power veers with backside power delivery. Those are huge changes to the current fabrication processes. The tweak from 20A is 18A ready in the second half of next year. And there they simply talk about future products. So 20A it appears crystal clear. It's on the horizon and we'll see Arrow Lake using ribbon fets and power veers. On the next slide we see what this means to Intel, their leadership roadmap. Well that's a claim, five nodes in four years. So Alder Lake and Raptor Lake on Intel 7, that's a hybrid design, P cores and E cores. Then we have Intel 4 and Intel 20A, we have a disaggregated design, Meteor Lake and Arrow Lake. Note the purple box, external N3. That's TSMC. Disaggregated design means they can combine chips both made by Intel and also by TSMC. We take this to mean that Meteor Lake will have an Intel processor chip or tile and a TSMC graphics chip. There may be other chips as well, such as, for example, AI or other accelerators. And then moving forward, ultra low performance products in Lunar Lake, we see again the purple box external and also 18A. Which tiles will be made externally and which on the Intel process? Don't know. Soon after my video went live, we saw news from WCCF Tech. Headline, Intel Arrow Lake CPUs rumored to drop 20A node, utilizing TSMC 3 nanometer instead. WCCF Tech says rumored, but despite that, we cannot see a way to reconcile this headline with Intel's roadmap. Arrow Lake, according to Intel, uses 20A. WCCF Tech says Intel is dropping 20A for Arrow Lake. What's going on here? There are two obvious explanations for this apparent conundrum. The first is that Intel's roadmap is just plain wrong. That would be a very big deal. The second is that WCCF Tech is wrong. They did in fairness say rumoured, but nonetheless their news story might just be complete bunkum. Or of course things might be somewhat more complicated. We can get a flavour for the potential complication if we look at this tweet from Dan Neistat in August of 2022, so just about a year ago, where he's talking about Meteor Lake. That's the laptop processor that's going to launch in the next few months, where he says that TSMC will manufacture three of the five tiles in Intel's upcoming Meteor Lake CPUs. The three tiles manufactured by TSMC, he says, will be the graphics, the system on chip, and the I.O. That obviously leaves the CPU and potentially also leaves the base tile which doesn't contain any logic. If we look at what retired engineer was saying in February 2022 about Arrow Lake, so further back but looking further forward, he says, as for high volume mainstream CPUs, looks like Intel is only planning to use TSMC for the GPU tiles for Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake. Previously, both the CPU and GPU tiles for Arrow Lake were TSMC N3. 
it seems that is no longer the case. So retired engineer is saying Arrow Lake was essentially going to be outsourced, or at least the two biggest parts of Arrow Lake. They were both going to be outsourced to TSMC, and Intel has now pulled the CPU in-house, but is leaving the graphics with TSMC. He also says for DC, data center, Sierra Forest is on Intel 3, not TSMC, as rumors suggest. Maybe this is also a change, like Granite Rapids moving from Intel 4 to Intel 3. None of the data center CPUs use TSMC, it seems, so Intel is going to have to rely solely on its own process to close the gap with AMD. My takeaway from there, he's making a slightly different point, is that Intel is actually taking the CPUs away from TSMC and bringing them in-house, but leaving the graphics with TSMC across a whole variety of processors. In other words the opposite of what WCCF Tech is saying. On the face of it, this is brilliant news for Dr. Lisa Su, the chair and CEO of AMD. In recent years, AMD has made a very big deal of the fact that they deliver, as promised, time after time after time. And of course, their key partner here is TSMC. As we try to figure out what's going on with Intel's roadmap, take a moment and consider, why does Intel publish roadmaps? And who is the audience for those roadmaps? You can guarantee the audience is not the buying public. Intel has no intention of laying out a year or two ahead of the game what is going to be on sale to the public up the road. Not in the slightest. They're not even really interested in talking to people like myself. So the buying public simply wants to know that Intel 15th gen is better than 14th gen is better than 13th gen in some way, shape or form. Hopefully it'll be faster, might have more cores because that sounds great, and if it's got longer battery life, so much the better. When it comes to journos like myself, it's a slightly mixed bag, so we'll be told the next thing is going to be better because some reason it'll use DDR5 memory and PCI Express Gen 5 or Gen 6, and that's all great. But when we get to the bottom of the matter, I don't much care if a new processor is made on a certain process or a different process. I care what it does. So if the process advances but the processor is a stinker, well that's bad news, isn't it? If on the other hand I'm delivered a processor that suddenly has 16 cores running at 6 gigahertz on 30 watts, I'll want to know what's gone on. And if the explanation is apparently it's using some new quantum material, well okay. I'd like to know more about that, but that is at least an explanation. And in that sense, that's what roadmaps can be for. But the bigger purpose of roadmaps is investors. Intel and all other companies are very keen to keep their investors happy. Investors do not like surprises. What they like is a nice steady increase in earnings. And the fact of the matter is that when you look at Intel's financial figures for 2022, the numbers look fairly shocking. Revenue, $63 billion. However, year on year, that was down 16%. Gross margin, 47%. However, that was down nearly 11% year on year. Earnings per share, $1.84 per share. That's down 65% year on year. Q1 of 2023, revenue, just about $12 billion. Gross margin, 38%, down best part of 15% year on year. Earnings per share, negative four cents, down 105% year on year. Q2 of 2023, these figures have just come out. Revenue, 12.9 billion, down 15%. Gross margin, just under 40%, down 5%. Earnings per share, 13 cents, down 54% year on year. And we see the executive summary of their financials. Q2 beat on revenue, gross margin, and earnings per share. Return to profitability expecting modest second half of 23 recovery, executing to capture the insatiable demand for compute, and delivering on long-term shareholder value, looking to save 3 billion in 2023 and 8 to 10 billion as they head out to 2025. And then we see executing our strategy. So in the client computing group, we have Meteor Lake about to happen, and that's going to bring AI to the PC. PC includes laptop at scale, Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake in 2024, and the NUC agreement with the Zeus. So Intel's not going to make NUCs anymore. They'll be made by a Zeus. 
uh, we suspect that Azus was already making knocks. In the data center, Emerald Rapids at the end of 2023, Sierra Forest will follow on rapidly, and then Granite Rapids on Intel 3 Process, Clearwater Forest coming on 18A in 2025. There's also mentioned a Gaudi 3 in the first half of 2024. So data center, which is very important to Intel, they have a number of different products on different processes over the next few years. If we very briefly look at a few bar charts, the client computing group, frankly, the figures look absolutely horrible, dropping to near zero. The data center is worse. They drop down to negative. And the outlook for Q3 of 2023, the revenue 13 to 14 billion, margin of 43%, down 3% year on year, earnings per share 20 cents, which is down 46% year on year. Intel is in a tricky position. The financials look rather nasty, and yet Intel has to deliver on their roadmaps in order that they don't spook the investors. If it's in the roadmap, Intel needs to deliver. If they fall off their chosen path, the investors are going to get deeply upset. And that's really bad news for a company like Intel. So the familiar Our Leadership roadmap has to be delivered on. Hybrid processors on Intel 7 are a done deal. The next step is disaggregated designs. This combines chips or tiles from Intel and external foundries, in this instance TSMC, to produce products. So parts made on Intel 4 and Intel 20A mixed and matched with parts made by TSMC on their N3 process, and the result is processors such as Meteor Lake, and soon after that, Arrow Lake. And then moving further forward, we have low power parts using external process, unspecified, presumably some form of two nanometer, and Intel 18A. Let us pull together the threads of the Intel 20A puzzle that will lead us to the solution about their Arrow Lake silicon. 20A is going to combine power veers and ribbon fets, and that will make Intel the first, i.e. they'll beat TSMC, to implement backside power onto silicon. Sounds comical? It's a big deal. Both Intel 20A and 18A are on schedule. 20A manufacturing in the first half of 2024, 18A in the second half of 2024. Intel 20A is going to be a big deal for us, the reviewer and the end user. Intel 18A, I think, is going to be an even bigger deal for Intel because they'll be pushing that to their foundry customers. And therefore, Intel has to deliver on this roadmap to regain their process technology leadership. Intel 7 done, Intel 4 is imminent, Intel 3 is a refinement, Intel 20A is a big deal, Intel 18A also a big deal. And they've listed the products that are coming with those fabrication processes, and they've listed the technologies they'll be using. And that surely means the WCCF tech story is incorrect. Intel will not be dropping the 20A node for Arrow Lake. They can't. It's impossible. And yet they kind of can, because of course Arrow Lake is not one thing. It is a great many things. It's a product stack, and it will use different dyes in different parts of the stack. Moore's Law is Dead has an explanation that appears to fit all the known facts, and it makes for slightly grim reading for us enthusiasts. Arrow Lake i9 will use TSMC 3 nanometer for an 8 plus 32 configuration, and that should take the performance crown on the desktop. The desktop i7 is very similar, TSMC 8 plus 16, and also laptop i7 from Arrow Lake TSMC 3 nanometer for a 6 plus 8 configuration. Desktop i5 and i3 will use Intel 20A silicon for a 6 plus 8 configuration, and then laptop i3 will use Intel 20A silicon for a 2 plus 8 Arrow Lake configuration. That, to my mind, seems like a horrible yet plausible explanation. We enthusiasts are going to feel gutted when we receive parts we won't even necessarily know at first whether it's Intel silicon or TSMC silicon. And we have to ask the question, why is Intel using TSMC at the high end and their own silicon at the lower end? It might be the case that Intel silicon is going to be more efficient than TSMC silicon. That's perfectly possible, in which case it makes perfect sense to use Intel silicon in laptops that require the best efficiency. 
it might be that TSMC can hit higher clock speeds on the desktop and Intel simply cannot do that or cannot do that for a certain power envelope. We simply don't know as yet, but you can bet we're going to be checking this out in some detail because this explanation for Moore's Law is Dead raises many questions. The thing is, while we enthusiasts will be quite unhappy with this outcome because it seems like a cheat, it is entirely possible that Intel's investors will be very happy. Intel will have a huge stack of products, they will have proved their disaggregated design process works, and now they're able to mix and match silicon both for CPU and GPU, and no doubt for other accelerators, and that will also please the investors. Overall, it's a win-win. And the end result is that WCCF Tech is probably incorrect, but they are quite right to point out there's something funny going on with Intel at the moment. I suspect Moore's Law is Dead is spot on with their analysis and their leak, and we're going to find out much more about this in the very near future, when first Meteor Lake comes along, and then Arrow Lake follows along soon after.